lab eight, the using the local adjustments in Lightroom, particularly the adjustment brush. Lab eight is located on the server. And we see, if we read through the lab, that the adjustment brush tool is used for local adjustments. So you should have this open also and looking at it or looking up here on screen with me. The adjustment brush tool is used for local adjustments. It's in the to toolbar located just below the histogram panel in the develop module. So we will be working in the develop module. Um, the Lightroom reader has more information about the adjustment brush, as does adobetv.com. But I'm going to give you a good overview today. You're going to select um, two photographs and use the adjustment brush to lighten or darken one or more areas that are needed to show improvement from this treatment. You might also decide to change various other options as it shows underneath the adjustment brush, such as clarity, contrast, saturation, sharpness. You'll be experimenting with this. Make sure to check all of your work at a navigator percentage of one to one. When you've successfully completed the assignment, you're going to turn in two screen captures of before and after of two different images, not five. You only need to do two for this assignment. I need to correct that. Make sure that the snapshot dialog box is showing, as well as the film strip with your virtual copies. That's incorrect. Um, make sure what's showing is the before and after and your adjustment brush uh, here. And it should be evident that you've selected one or more areas to change, OK? Put them in a folder called um, lab assignment eight underscore adjustment brush with your name and put it in my Dropbox by the end of the lesson. So this is uh, not quite correct information. Sorry about that. I will fix it and um, upload a fresh copy for you. So the overview of the adjustment brush, make sure you're in the develop module. So I'm going to switch from the library to the develop module. I'm just going to hide the panel here on the left. The adjustment brush is located right, the adjustment toolbar, the local adjustment or adjustment toolbar is located here underneath the histogram. There are many different tools. The one that we're going to be focusing on is the adjustment brush and just for fun, the adjustment graduated filter. So first off, the brush. If we click once on the brush, we get a drop down. This drop down is the same as uh, shown underneath the graduated filter, but they work a little differently. Um, if I scroll down a little bit further, there's a little bit more of the panel that describes the size of the brush. So this is my brush here. And you see that there's two states to the brush. There's the add state, which is A, and the erase state, which is B. You can control the size of the brush through the, the size slider or by using your left and right bracket keys. So the goal for me is going to be to lighten this side of the mountain here slightly. So I want a nice large brush. And I like a soft feather. The halo around the size of the brush is called the feather. And so this is a very hard edge brush, and this is a very soft edge brush. So um, you can experiment with both to see which meets your needs the most. We then have the density of the brush. 100% means that you fully want to affect the area that you're selecting. Less than 100% means you don't want to affect it 100. I would start at 100. Your flow refers to how fast. Uh, the painting comes out or the adjustment happens, I would leave it at 100. So I would leave the feather at 100, the flow at 100, and the density to, at 100 just for starter so you can get the hang of it. You can adjust the size as needed. So I'm going to make a little bit of a larger size. Now when I start painting, nothing's really going to happen yet because all of my settings are at zero. Um, and I don't have this overlay mask on. I'm going to turn on the Show Selected Mask Overlay icon 
because that's going to at least give me a temporary view of what I'm selecting. So this is called a red ru ruby leth. And it's not real paint. It's just helping me to see where I'm, the parts of the image that I'm actually selecting. OK? Um, and you can see that this is my uh, nodal point for this adjustment. If I click off of it, if I want another area, I can go up here and say new and click off of it and make a new adjustment. And that one is now hibernating. Or I can click on this one and hit the delete key and it deletes it. Likewise, I can click on this one and hit the delete key and it deletes that adjustment. One thing I'm going to try is turning on this auto mask. Notice that when you have the auto mask on and you paint, it looks for the edge or contrast areas of the image. Do you see that? How it snapped to the edge? So turning on the auto mask allows for Lightroom to kind of look for the contrast edges. Um, it's, a, it's a really nice handy tool because I just want kind of the shadow areas, but then I'm going to need to turn it off when I want to paint in solid the areas in the middle, okay? And um, I can undo that one, turn back on the mask, maybe get a little bit of a smaller brush for this part up here, okay? And maybe take that part here. So now I have selected this left side of the mountain. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off the mask overlay because I think I'm pretty good. Now, this is a little sloppy over here. I might choose to select the erase icon. Now I'm in the, the other mode here. And I'm going to size down. Notice I have a minus sign because I'm taking away parts of the selection. In the dark room, in the traditional dark room, we call this burning and dodging. Here in uh, Lightroom, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my mask selection now. I can use these controls to just this isolated area. So if I want to increase my exposure a little bit, look at that. I can increase my exposure. I can increase the warmth or the temperature of that particular side. Um, I can control just the highlights or just the shadows if I want. I can control the clarity. Does anybody remember what clarity means? What does clarity mean? Mid-tone contrast. See how much texture is showing? That's a little bit strong in the clarity. And I think I'd want to do actually an overall clarity adjustment to the whole image. So I'm going to leave that off, not just selective clarity. I can control saturation, and notice I'm in a one-to-one -one view when I'm using some of the saturation and clarity tools and also the sharpness tools. So these are some things I think I want to do to the whole image first. When do you use the adjustment brush? At what point in your workflow? Well, you want to use it after you've done your global adjustments. So I'm going to say done. and. The adjustment brush should be worked with after you've gone through the basic panel and made your basic corrections overall, because these basic corrections overall are going to affect the whole image. And then you can kind of evaluate the image and decide that you want to go back and make some selective adjustments. So this still looks a little odd. I've got kind of a big difference between um, this side and this side of the mountain. I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to click on this to edit it. So I can roll over and wait, and it'll show me my mask, or I can click on the icon below. But I think I overdid it with the tint or the warmth here. So I'm going to just turn it back down and say done. And I think I'd rather change the overall warmth of the whole image. OK? But we did do a good job of kind of lightening that side of the mountain. So see if you can try that for practice before you work on the lab on your own image. Um, I'm going to show you, before I let you go, I went ahead and deleted that correction. I'm going to show you the graduated filter correction. When I click on the graduated filter, everything is the same, except I don't have the brush sizes here. The way the graduated filter to 100% opacity correction, notice that 
This is my 100% correction, so if I want to increase my exposure, it's affecting everything from here to the right. This is 100%, this is a gradual uh, to 0%. So I can also draw it this direction, draw it, go the other direction here, and that will actually, oops, maybe not, maybe this direction. There we go. And that affects this side of the mountain. But it also takes with it the foreground and the trees. So this is particularly a really nice tool when you're working with um, areas that have real distinct skies, like this picture. I'm just going to go ahead and um, grab this tool here. So if I want to make the sky a little darker here, I can do that. Look at that moody, huh? I can change the temperature. The other thing I can do is add a color wash. Right now, white means there's no color wash, but I could add a little bit of a color wash if I wanted to add a little bit more blue. Um, and I can add more than one. I went ahead and clicked on the tool to close it. I'm going to click on it to open it again, and I'm going to add also something for the ocean here. So the graduated filter tool works really great for landscapes when you have half of the image uh, that needs to be corrected and you want to leave the other half untouched. And it's a quick job um, versus um, this image which, where we really needed to use the adjustment brush to select a particular area. And then when you're done, say done, and it'll close the tool. Okay, and it closed the tool. And again, we can go back in and click on the node and make adjustments or hit the delete key. So what we want to see is I want to see your adjustments. I want you to show me your before and after. I want you to open the tool and click here and show me the adjustments that you made and then take a screenshot. You might try one of each tool if you like, it's optional, but I definitely want you to practice with the brush because it's a little, it can be a little more challenging. So I'm going to click here and zoom in and find that point. Where'd it go? Anyway, and then make a screen grab. Name these. Um, lab 8 underscore your name and put them in a folder on the server. And raise your hand if you have any questions.